Facebook account. So hello Facebook, very nice to be with you all. Happy Wellbeing Wednesday. Very warm welcome to you if you're watching me on YouTube as well. Very nice to have your company and thank you so much on YouTube for all your comments and questions. I do have some today which I'm going to be getting through. Now I posted on my Instagram a little bit earlier today that I would be interviewing a great guest who I've had on here before from Optibac, talking all about health, female health, uh, hormone health. It's obviously Menopause Awareness Month. There's a lot of stuff going on. I hope everyone's downloaded the hashtag My Menopause calendar that we've done over at Lizelle Wellbeing. Every day it gives you a little task or a little idea to do so that by the end of the month we are so clued up. Honestly, we are on it like nothing else we will know everything or most things anyway there's always new things to know isn't there but we will know an awful lot so uh, that is going to be coming up today um there is i did actually put out a call for questions so i do have some questions that many of you have raised which i am going to be covering with claire talking about pelvic health in particular and in fact if you're watching me on youtube on catch up or if you um, have access to youtube and i guess that's kind of like everybody i did record uh, probably about a year ago a vlog all about pelvic health and hormones and probiotics and covering all sorts of things from cystitis pelvic floor issues incontinence bacterial vaginosis vaginal atrophy i mean all of that stuff it's quite it's quite um an in-depth shall we say discussion <laughs> And I think it's still up there on YouTube. So if you want to take a little look after that, please do. Lainey, thank you very much, my lovely. Lainey is with us on Facebook, uh, popping up all the links to things that we talk about. So thank you very much. Obviously, we can't link on Instagram, but if you head to Lizard Wellbeing or if you head to the link in the bio for Lizard Wellbeing magazine on Instagram, that will open up a load of links for the things that I talk about. Thank you very much. I am... Um, uh, menopause matters poster yeah you should get that for your cafe diane danzybrink she's the one to contact on that um a few comments about what i'm wearing being well being wednesday i thought i'd be in the pink obviously this beautiful pink color is my brand color here at lizard Wellbeing. you can see it um, on some of the magazines behind me this is another favorite from carol my lovely friend carol McEwen. she's only on instagram and you have to get onto her mailing list if you want her things but i just love the the kind of the soft sleeves and guess what it has pockets yes so one of my favorites so thank you very much carol i hope you are well if you're tuning in and just to say i know that a few of you have been hoovering up um, the last bits of ivy the ivy collection from the lizard wellbeing jewelry range so these are i'm wearing the rose gold this is ivy and the little ivy earrings which i just love i don't know maybe it's just an autumnal thing but they're so easy to wear you just literally just kind of pop them in and the yellow gold has sold out unfortunately i think nikki i think you were one of the last last ones to get that i remember searching in the back of the drawer thinking i know i've got one left somewhere and um, but we do still have a few of the rose gold and they are at a discount let me just try and remember sorry i should be better prepared shouldn't i they're mentioned in here actually if you want to take a look yeah, 25% off. There you go. Over on Lizelle Jewelry. You don't need a code. They're already, they're already marked down, but be quick if you would like them because they are going really quickly. Okay, so thank you very much, Catherine. Nice to have you with me. Uh, let us see whether we can get Claire uh, with us. Um, Optibac, here we go. Uh, we do have a 20% Liz Loves on this particular product from Optibac if you use the code all in capitals, all one word. Hi, Claire. Hi, Liz. How are you? I am very well indeed. How are you? I am great, thank you. Lovely Good. day today. Yeah, beautiful sunshine. Oh, my goodness. I don't know whereabouts are you. I'm in southwest London and we've got blue skies. It's great. Yeah, I'm down in Hampshire, so not too far away. Yeah, so similar. It's lovely to chat with you again. I remember last time we chatted particularly about probiotics and pelvic health, and there was just such an amazing reaction. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I really did actually genuinely want want to talk about and I'm you know I'm not a, a, a paid for ambassador for this but I do genuinely love it is the Optibac for women and I discovered this because I had issues with cystitis um, and just general kind of pelvic health and when I was doing my research for my good gut guide book 
it became really clear that the certain strains of bacteria could be really helpful for women particularly, and it was the Ramnosus strain that I was researching, and that's what really led me to Optibac, because this is the main strain, isn't it, in this particular supplement? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a couple of strains in that one. And Ruteri as well, I think, is that right? Yeah, so there's um, the Lactobacillus Ruteri RC14 and the Lactobacillus Ramnosus GR1, Okay, so that's very interesting. Let's talk about, if, if you are using any probiotics or you're interested in probiotic supplements, how does the labelling work? Because you often see lactobacillus as kind of the, the first name of something. Not always, but that tends to be kind of one of the big families, which is always with a capital L. Then there's another little word beyond that. And then there's often a series of numbers. So can you break it down in, into what we could look for on labels? Yeah, absolutely. So if you're looking for a product that you want to um, support vaginal health with, you need to look for the strains that are um, researched for intimate flora. So we know that the Lactobacillus ruteri RC14, so the RC14 is the strain, okay. and the Lactobacillus rhamnosus GR1, that's the strain. It's the letters and the numbers at the end, they are the strains. So it's the genus, species, and strain, basically. Okay, so, so genus, species. So the, the species. genus is Lactobacillus. Yeah. And what other um, genuses can you get in probiotic worlds? Oh, there's lots. So there'll be Lactobacillus. Um, uh, would you oh, get Bifido? I mean, would would yeah, would, would yeah, that be? Yeah, bacteria. Yeah. So there's there's a whole wide range. So of the genus so. Is, is like your big family, if you like. Yeah, absolutely. That's the first one. And then the strain, yeah. that's your kind of individual variety. Yes, yeah. So this, when you're looking for a probiotic specific for um, vaginal health, or there are strains obviously that are specific for um, problems with gut health as well, but specifically for vagina health, you want that yeah. RC14 and the GR1 strains that are in that product that you've got there. Right, right. And these are the ones that are clinically tested, so you know. I mean, I have to say, I, I mean, I've been taking this particular product of yours for years. Um, yeah. And it's something that I come back to again and again and again. And I just, you know, even though I, I use HRT and I have vaginal estrogen and all of that kind of thing, I just find that this really just helps support all of that. So it's not about having an either or, is it? It's not, you know, oh, I've just got my estrogen, I'm okay. There are occasions when you might actually need your intimate flora I love that expression <laughs> kind of topping up as well so should we go back yeah. and just kind of because this is menopause awareness month um, and there is so much talk about menopausal health generally and, and we you know we talk a lot about hot flushes and anxiety and things and sometimes we kind of forget the stuff that's going on below the waist so can we talk specifically about the issues that happen in later life for women in the pelvic region? Should we talk about that yes. broadly and then we can talk about specifically how we can help it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as we go, as we transition through the menopause, the lactobacilli, which is the most dominant um, friendly bacteria in the vaginal flora, becomes less and less. Really? So um, that can then become a but make us more susceptible to getting vaginal infections. Yeah. So that's why it's great to support with like a probiotic that has those particular strains that help to support the vaginal tract. That's so interesting, you know, because I remember being in my mid forties and being kind of perimenopausal and not, not knowing about it and, and just, you know, not connecting the dots. I think so many of us don't. And that was a time when I was so susceptible to UTIs, to cystitis, and you know, and I saw many different doctors and consultants. I just got prescribed antibiotics, which didn't work. They made me feel rotten. They might have cleared things up for you know a week or two, and then just bang straight back again. And you know, nobody has ever said to me actually your levels of lactobacillus around the vagina and in the pelvic area are declining at that stage. Isn't that fascinating to know that? Yeah, absolutely. And like you say, a lot of women don't know this. So, um, I mean, we get a lot of inquiries about people to get reoccurring infections. Yeah. Because like yourself, they've taken antibiotics and we know that antibiotics are great. They can be real lifesavers, but they do destroy the good 
and the bad bacteria. So you've got a double whammy, haven't you? Not only are they not yeah. necessarily going to sort out your issue, but they're going to take away what good bugs you have got, potentially. Yeah, and then you can kind of get up in a, a, a vicious cycle yeah. where the bad guys get hold and then you just keep getting these reincurring infections. So, yeah, and this is, uh, well, it can be due to the fact that the lactobacilli is, you know, the fluctuating hormones, it just has a massive impact on our vaginal flora. So interesting. So interesting. And so in the old days, I remember being told things like, you know, um, apply yogurt, you know, for things like thrush and candida, because that's got a live lactobacillus. You know, is, is there any evidence in that? I mean, obviously eating plain live yogurt is very good internally because we're going to repopulate the microbiome with, with the, the, the good gut bugs. Is there any evidence yeah. that, you know, we can help by applying stuff? Um, well, I, I wouldn't like to say like a directly you're right that they do con contain you know um, gut friendly and you know gut friendly foods do contain probiotics so mm. definitely eating them would be beneficial to our gut health and kind of overall well-being anyway but yeah um, if you want something that's going to specifically target the vaginal area yeah. then you need to find those specific strains and they're not necessarily in gut friendly foods interesting I think that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, we know that we need to be having a wide variety of foods and, you know, some plant fibres and all of those things and our kombucha and our kimchis and our kefirs and all of those things that I bang on about all the time. But it's quite hard if, if we are looking to sort out a particular issue. It's hard to know what specific strain, you know, is, is in that. I mean, that's why I quite like always reading labels because you can, you know, just go for... for... So remind me, it's the genus, then the strain... No, the genus, the genus species, species strain. strain. Genus yeah. species strain. So the, the strain yeah. is the number, and that's yeah. the thing. Yeah, so really the strain that's the important bit, because that's the bit that's researched, and then you know that these particular strains are going to reach the vaginal tract alive, so that's what you're looking for. Right, and is this something that can be taken with other probiotics? I'm seeing some of the questions that are coming in now. You know, I mean, can you combine... I know that Octobac do a huge range, um, and our discount, by the way, that Liz loves is just for this one. OK, there's 20 percent off the one that says for women, which is the purple one that we're talking about. But if you're taking other probiotics as well, can you add this in? Can you kind of take yeah. it alongside? Yeah, uh, absolutely, because all of our products contain different strains. So they're all going to be working in different areas. So ah. some women, as they go through the menopause, also tend to suffer from gut problems as well. So it might be a bit of, you know, a lot of women experience weight gain bloating, digestive issues, so it, you can combine the two if you need to, so you're getting gut support from one of the daily products, but also you'll get vaginal support from the For Women product. Great, and there's no issue, I know a lot of people talk about things like IBS, and you know, there, there'd be no contraindications to using something like this. Um, well, you'd always need to check with your GP if you're on certain medications. So we always recommend if someone has a compromised immune system that you should check with a GP first. Yeah. But there shouldn't be any con contraindications. Um, you know, if you're not taking any medication and you're quite healthy, then there shouldn't yeah. be any contraindications with taking the uh, probiotics. They're very safe supplements to take. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've given them to, to my children for, for a long time as well. And I think we have to remember they're food supplements, aren't they? They're things that are found in foods. So yeah. they well, are... Yeah, friendly bacteria. So we know from gut-friendly foods that, you know, they're naturally occurring in foods as well. So, you know, they're very safe to take. And, they you know, we, we had a little bit of a joke last time about what happens in the gut doesn't stay in the gut. It's not like Vegas. So we have to remember that you know, the impact of our gut health has an impact on how we think, act and feel. Yes. So, you know, if we don't feel great, then that affects everything for us, doesn't it? We yeah. might have a bad day, we might have a bit of brain fog, you know, and then all these things can be linked back to our gut. Mm. It's really fascinating, you know, learning that 80% of our immune system originates in the gut and just how important that is, especially at the moment, to keep our immune system strong and healthy. I mean, I'm yeah, just constantly okay. thinking about this this battle. I, I was talking about uh, microbial health this time last week, actually, and you know we were saying that that there are these neutral bacteria that can kind of go either way. They can side with either team, and it depends on the influences that are around them. So if we feed them with good bacteria, 
and good friendly bugs, then they build up on the good side. But if we start to introduce too much of the bad stuff, you know, pathogenic bacteria or an overload of sugar, for example, that feeds the bad bugs, then you're going to tip the balance the other way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what we eat, you know, it's not just about providing energy to our body. It provides important messages to our body as well. Yeah. So, it, yeah, it can tip us one way or the other, depending on, you know, if you're eating a high sugar diet, then that's going to have a big influence, not just on your gut health, but your vaginal health as well. Isn't that interesting? Talk about that. So how, how would sugar influence vaginal health? So we know that when you consume too much sugar, it can cause, um, like some, you know, something like candida. Mm. So then that can influence um, our vaginal health. And what causes candida? It can be an overgrowth of, um, you know, yeast, which can be caused by eating too much sugar. Right. Right. It seems to be quite common, actually, in, in younger women. I know that we're talking about menopause and, you know, older, second half of life. Um, but, you know, I can remember as, as a, you know, a young woman, kind of late teens, early 20s, candida and over, you know, overgrown of yeast infections just seem to be, there almost seem to be an epidemic of it. And then it, it seemed to kind of, you know, maybe go a bit quieter or maybe it's something that just tends to affect more younger women, do you think? Yeah, I mean, we're all individuals, so sure. what we've got to remember is that our, you know, both our gut microbiome and our vaginal flora is as unique as our fingerprint. So, of course, you know, through life there'll be some women that are more susceptible to certain yeah. things. You know, that and and diet and lifestyle can hugely influence that. You know, if we eat a high yeah. sugar diet, it can disrupt our gut microbiome, but also can lead us, you know, to vaginal infections as well so it's you know it's a case of um having a balance so yeah. you know we all like a bit of chocolate cake every now and then but sure. you know, don't eat it every day not every day it's, um, yeah. yeah and you know other things like stress and medication they have a huge impact on how our gut reacts as well so um yeah there's never any one thing it's always a combination of different mm. things Mm, really interesting. Um, and would this rhamnosus and ruteri combination, would that be helpful for candida? Um, so it's generally for UTIs and to, to support, you know, general vaginal health. So right. uh, with, with candida, it would be, um, you'd probably maybe looking at different products to help support it as well. But, you know, we recommend um, those strains really to support overall vaginal health. Yeah. And cystitis. I mean, I know it's always very difficult because you're, you know, you're, you're part of Optivac and you've got to be very careful about medical claims. And I know that, you know, you have regulators watching you as, as to what you can say. But I do know that there's a lot of uh, reviews and, and uh, you know, anecdotal studies to say that these things can be incredibly helpful. And, you know, I know from my own experience that it's it's really good stuff. And I miss it, to be yeah. honest, when, when I'm not taking it. Even though I'm drinking my kefir and doing all my other things, maybe it's that specific strain, you know, that, yeah. that, I'm, that I'm needing. And, you know, we get such great reviews for that product. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, your, you your audience are welcome to go and look at our reviews. Yeah. To get a reviews for it because it, it you know just really helps a lot of women yeah it really staggers me you know how little is still known by so many of the the leading specialists I remember talking to a girlfriend who had had so you know long-term issues with cystitis and UTIs and bacterial vaginosis when you get that you know really unpleasant smell and you know she was very conscious of this and you know it actually took you know quite a lot of courage for her to even you know start talking to me about it and she knew I was writing about gut health so it, you know it was um, kind of a, a perhaps an easier conversation for me to have with her and we started talking about probiotics uh, and she found this particularly helpful this this uh, Optibac for women and she said that she'd been to her GP who'd re referred her to a gynecologist who'd referred her to a pelvic health specialist who had just given her nuclear strength antibiotics and just yeah. talked about, you know, oh, well, your flora changes all the time and let's just, you know, kind of nuke the bad bugs to, you know, to kill them off that are causing it. And of course, you know, she took these antibiotics, she felt dreadful uh, and then it came back. So, you know, she, she kind of spent all this money and wasted everybody's time and her own health as well when actually doing something much more proactive, repopulating your, your good bugs. But I think, you know, she was also 
probably early 50s. So that, that you know, the, the menopause and low oestrogen would also have been impacting that as well. Yeah, uh, I think really it's just about getting the message out. Because, yeah, I agree. you know, doc doctors are so um, overstretched at the moment as well. And, you know, sure. sometimes women have to, you know, take back control and, and try and do a bit of research and, mm. and look for things that are going to be beneficial to their health. And, again, it's like people like you that are talking about it all the time, that are just spreading the word of, you know, not just probiotics, but other things that can help when you're going through the menopause. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what is the connection with probiotics and help for menopause? I mean, can we expect to get help? by having you know a few more sprinkling a few more probiotics in, in into our daily diet when we're in midlife yeah so um you, it can help two ways with the menopause so um firstly there's obviously products in our range that can help support gut health and that's really helpful if someone's got um you know uh, bloating um mm. the, the digestive system just gets a bit sluggish you know lots mm. of women complain about weight gain Yes. Um, and just you know, being ha able to digest your foods properly, so that's really important. So there are products in our range that can help support gut health, mm. and then there's obviously the For Women product, which you champion, that yeah, really helps it. support <laughs> vaginal health. And it's yeah. you know, it's those strains that really target the um, vaginal tract. So you know, you can do a two pronged approach. Yeah. Um, I mean, also with um, gut health, there's lots of research with the gut brain connection as well. So, mm. um, you know, it's not just physical symptoms that women no. suffer from, they get a lot of emotional symptoms as well. Definitely, so, anxiety, sleep disturbance, you know, yeah. all of those things. And I like the way that you can combine it. So, um, you know, using things like topical oestrogen, you know, using vaginal oestrogen, you can get pessaries, you can get pellets, you can get creams, you can get rings, you know, you can get all sorts. And that is so super safe. You know, yes. I know consultants, you know, oncologists, even during active breast cancer treatment who will prescribe these and use them because they're so localised. Um, and also yeah. for older women, you know, I was talking to a nurse the other day about women in care homes, very elderly, having such issues and being debilitated with recurrent urinary tract infections and saying, you know, something as really simple as a, as a vaginal oestrogen ring can just so help. And again, you know, taking something like this, adding this in, I mean, you know, so often our elderly are on so many forms of medication, aren't they? And if you can take yeah. something alongside that that could really help yeah, support absolutely. what's going on. I mean, just awful. Just can you imagine being you know, stuck in a, in a care home and, and suffering recurrent infections and not getting any help or any assistance. Relief, yeah. Just just dreadful. Yeah, you know. no, you're right. It's, it's, it's great that you can, you know, we can combine all these different things. Like I said, it's never just one thing. It's, yeah. it's you know, you can combine lots of things together to help, you know, steer yourself towards optimal health. Yeah. Now, while I've got you, I'm just glancing down here because I have had some questions. I did put on my personal Instagram earlier today that, that we were going to be chatting. So I did a call for questions. So I've just got a couple here. Um, from This is from Zoe. Does it help with vaginal burning? I'm not sure what would be causing that. I'm on um, HRT patches and vaginal oestrogen. So that's good. So it's obviously doing the, the, the hormone route as well. But I would I imagine... Say, I, I would say speak to the GP regarding that. Um, you know, probiotics can help. We would say general vaginal support. Yeah. You know, we can't make any um, medicinal you claims. You can't do so. a, a medical diagnosis yeah. over uh, Instagram, and, and quite also, right. <laughs> you know, she needs to speak. If she's got vaginal burning, then she needs to speak to her GP first. I thought that yeah. would be our, our, our guidance to always speak to Get that you know, checked a, out. a medical profession first. And then if you want to support, you know, if you want to support your vaginal health afterwards, then of course try the for yeah. women products and see if they help absolutely that's the great thing you know try it for a month yeah um, and see what difference it makes i actually I, I took mine this morning like i normally do um is it just one a day because sometimes if i'm feeling you know i can feel a bit sensitive in that area i do actually take a couple yeah so we recommend that if you've got um you know if you think you've got an active infection then you can take two a day yeah. for up to seven days Mm. And then you can take one a day if you want yeah. like a maintenance dose just to keep... That's what I do. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Okay, uh, another question here, which I think we've covered actually from Della, who says, can you use more than one variety from this range together? Well, we've covered that, haven't we? Yeah. So yes, yeah, absolutely. Can. They're all, they're all different. 
they're all different strains. Uh, this yeah. is from Nikki. Interesting, this is um, slightly off topic, Nikki, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, it says, which particular OptiBac would help with inflammation or allergy or histamine in the body? Okay, so, I mean, histamine is a very, very complicated subject. It is, um, again, yeah. It's different for everyone. Yeah. So, but we do, you know, we have a helpline at OptiBac, so she's welcome to ring in and speak Great. to one of the nutritional therapists, and then she'll get one-to-one -one That's really good um, idea. Guidance, so, That's really good um, idea, because there yeah. may be lots of other factors at play, and as you say, you know, one person's histamine intolerance, you know, is, is very different from, from somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, this is Mrs. Pilkington, who says, can we talk about pelvic floor exercises? Well, I think, you know, I mean, I have done podcasts and, and Instagram lives specifically talking about pelvic floor. Um, do, uh, Mrs. Pilkington, do go and have a look at my podcast. If you head to lizardwellbeing.com, just type in pelvic floor, you know, all the information will come up there. And it's quite interesting talking to female physios. And you, you, know, you talk to women's health physios and they specialise in pelvic physiotherapy which is amazing and even they will say that pelvic floor is not a hundred percent you know it's I don't know whether you've got an experience um, in talking about this but it's you know it can definitely be very helpful but it's not always the complete answer no I, and again I think like you say there's experts in that department so I would probably refer them yeah your listeners and your audience to you know watch the, the podcast that you've done yeah. speaking to the experts on that yeah but actually you know it's really good I mean I, I don't know about you but it's kind of made me sit here and squeeze as I talk because yeah. we, we need to be reminded <laughs> Don't we? We need to be reminded. I mean, I remember years ago, I was talking to a, a physio and she said, listen, every time you put the kettle on, that's your reminder. You know, the, you click the switch and that's the reminder to do your kind of 30 squeezes, which was yeah. all very well until I installed a boiling tap in my kitchen. <laughs> and so there was not, no, I didn't have that kind of trigger to go and like, yeah. oh, press the switch and wait for it to boil. So now I have to kind of remember while I'm standing there with my with my boiling tap that that is that is the moment that I should be. Yeah. <laughs> I have to when you sit at the traffic lights do it then but then you know now we're all working from home I don't drive We're not anywhere. doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well there's lots of comments coming on Instagram everybody I think is watching this and squeezing I hope Facebook yeah. I hope you're squeezing Squeeze and now. YouTube later on. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, another question here. Should we take probiotics daily alongside gut-friendly foods? That's a good question. Yes, yeah. So as I said, um, probiotics are naturally occurring in gut-friendly foods. So if anyone doesn't know what gut-friendly food is, it's, it's things like yogurt, kefir, you know, sauerkraut, kimchi, things like that. So they've got bacteria in them. Definitely, we always encourage people to eat those because they're part of a healthy, balanced diet. Yeah. But again, if you you know if you want to know what strain you're taking, then yeah. you do need to take a probiotic. So if you want to support vaginal health, yes, you need to look for those strains that are in the the for women product. Yeah. And just to remind people, if you were late to the party, we are talking about Lactobacillus ruteri RC14. Mm -hmm. And Lactobacillus rhamnosus GR1. Yes. And Ruteri, actually, just as an aside, I was doing some research into Ruteri not that long ago, looking at brain health. Oh, and really? yeah, and looking at the production of oxytocin and our happy hormone being linked to L Ruteri, which I thought was quite interesting. So I'm not sure if it's that particular strain. I need to go away now and check the numbers in the research yeah. papers and see if see it's the same. The at the end that's really interesting i mean it's uh, the, the science of you know different genus species and strains i mean i just find it really fascinating so interesting yeah. it's a it's a you know it's growing all the time we're learning stuff all the time and it's just yeah. the, the influence that bacteria has on us yeah. you know and our well-being our mental health our digestive health our vaginal health it's just yeah. I, I mean i just love it so i'm, fa I'm fascinated by it. how long have you been at optibag I've been at OptiBac for two years now, but I'm obviously a nutritional therapist, so yeah. I studied um, for four years, and then I've got my own, my own clinic, and I work with perimenopausal women, so... Oh, brilliant. And where, where is that? Do you want to give us the details in case anyone wants to look you up? So I'm based in Andover, but of course everything's on Zoom now in Hampshire, but yeah, so my business is called FOSS Nutrition. FOSS, F-O-S-S. F-O-S-S Nutrition, and we work from a... Um, uh, a perspective it's four pillars basically we look at food we look at out 
outside and offline, the importance of doing exercise and disconnecting, yeah. sleep and stress, and that also spells FOSS, so it kind of links nicely together. But we Food, kind of outside, sleep pillars. and stress. Excellent. Yeah. Very good. Very clever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we work on these four pillars. Um, and it, it is a diet and lifestyle program, so, you know, it, you know, we, I will ask you to change your diet. I will ask you to do exercise. I'm going to mm. ask you to manage your stress levels. We work on sleep because that's a big problem. But mm. we do introduce, um, you know, if you need to go on HRT, then <clears throat> that can be incorporated in it as well. In fact, a lot of my mm. ladies that I work with are already on HRT. And actually, HRT with a great diet, with exercise, yeah. with, you know, managing stress, it's a great combination. Sure. I mean, transformational. I, 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 yeah, yeah. I, I would never, never want to be without it. Um, and looking forward now, you know, you talk about all these new developments and discoveries of new strains and things. Do you think that it's just going to get bigger and bigger? Are we going to be finding out more specifically about these individual strains and, and what they can be used, the areas they can target? So rather than being this kind of broad, oh, let's just eat more yogurt and have more kind of general, do you think we're going to be using specific strains to, to target certain ailments? Yeah, I mean, I certainly hope so, because that, you know, then that almost turns to quite personalised um, health care then, doesn't yeah. it? So. Yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's always research going into probiotics and gut health. You know, I I did um, some research a couple of years ago, and you know, gut health was one of one of the most common search um, mm -hmm. requests, which was really interesting. So um, yeah, so I just think it's a fascinating subject, and it's always growing. We yes. just, you know, as science improves, we just learn so much. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And to think that it's all happened, you know, so so quickly, really. Yeah. Relatively really recently and, and is so effective. Claire, absolutely brilliant to talk to you. Thank you very, very much indeed. Um just to remind everybody uh that this is what we've been talking about, the Octoback for women, okay? And we do have the Liz Loves code which gives you twenty percent off this particular supplement. Okay, it's just this one. And that I think is running for uh October because that is yeah. menopause month. So yeah. have, I, have I got that right? Yes, and you've got our old packaging now, Liz. We've got new packaging now, some have lovely got... glass yarns. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I think I just, yes, got, well, I, I, I think I just got these from my we'll cupboard. I'll get some sent out to you. I'm sorry about that. No, you've got, you got lovely, okay, in lovely new packaging, which will come to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's what's inside that's important. Absolutely. That's that's what it's I love. Count, not the but it is lovely. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Thank you so much, Claire. Do come back and talk oh, to us another so time. Let, let's pick another area, perhaps, of health that we can work on. Maybe we can. I know that IBS and digestion is such a big issue for many as well. So maybe we can have yeah, a discussion absolutely. on that next lovely. time. Great. Thank have you. Have a lovely afternoon. And you too. Enjoy the sun. Thanks Take for being care. with bye us. Bye bye. bye, -bye. You'll have to leave me, hun, because if I click you off, then I think I click everybody off. Isn't that interesting? Honestly, I just, I love my job. I learn so much. I think, you know, here am I, I've written books on gut health. I know about so much. And then, you know, you're just still always learning, always learning new things. So, yes, just to say, I can see some comments here. Yes, there is a Liz Loves. Okay, Liz Loves, all in capitals, 20% off. So that is super generous. I will be stocking up, trust me. Um, it's just on this one, Optiback for women, okay? Just on that one, but totally worth it. Um, I'm, yeah, definitely going to be getting some in their new packaging. Sorry about that. Uh, just to remind, obviously, we're really focusing on all these kinds of things at the moment because it is menopause month. We've got World Menopause Day coming up. I think that's Monday week. I have recorded a new podcast snippet for my Friday Five with the legend, that is Dr. Louise Newson. So do make sure that you pop a note in your diary to either on Friday or over the weekend, have a listen to that podcast. Um, and there's lots, there's lots going on, honestly. We put on our website, you can go there now and you can download your month planner for October. And there are things to do every day. There's recipes to make. You can make the, my menopause cake and share it with colleagues and friends and family and start a discussion. You can listen to some of the really specific um, 
conversations around things like we're talking about today, vaginal health, vaginal atrophy, all of that. There's chats about testosterone, about breast cancer, you know, you name it, it's all there. Yes, Kay, the code is Liz Loves. Okay, Liz Loves, all in capitals, all one word. Um, now, I do have, of course, my ebooks. So I published my very first menopause book. Well, actually, funnily enough, the first menopause book I wrote. Um, I can't get it down, but it's, it's up there. It's that blue one, my quick guide, which was written about, oh, I don't know, 30 years ago, maybe. Um, massively updated, because that was actually written at a time when HRT was going through a big scare, and there was then the Women's Health Initiative study, which was the, the study that had all the wrong information about how it you know, was linked to breast cancer and all of this. So um, I go into that in great detail in more of my more recent books, you know, being really brought bang up to date. But the two that are quite helpful if you are interested or you want to share them with friends are online, they're e-guides. And there's the first one, which is really simple, straightforward guide to a healthy menopause. So that is kind of just your starting point, really. And then the one that I always get, I get asked so many questions about this endlessly, literally daily, if not hourly. Uh, is about HRT all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. And so I wrote an e-guide which is literally called The Truth About HRT. Okay, and it's just, it's all in there. And I would highly recommend that if you are considering HRT or you're um, wanting to know more about it or to share with somebody who's also interested uh, but unsure, then it is very much evidence-based. And what I love about e-guides actually and e-books is that they have links in them. So, you know, you can download them onto your laptop, onto your phone, onto your you know, iPad or whatever, and then you just click the link. So if I'm referencing a study or the NICE guidelines or uh, a kind of a symptom tracker, anything like that, then you literally just click on the link and it's all there. There's also links to specific podcasts. So although I do love my printed page, obviously, I'm never going to give up print, at least I hope not. Um, it's not the intention. You know, I love having tangible printed things and printed books. I do recognise that there is real value in having things online that you can easily access and you can update it as well. And we do occasionally put uh, major updates when something new comes out, when there's a new study, for example, that's relevant. Um, then we do pop that into the updated e-guides. Um, now, we do have, if you are interested, I've just got a note here from my team just to say that they still have just a few, not many, but a few of the Mighty Brew kombucha, the Rose Blush kombucha, uh, which just sold so quickly, we had to make another batch. It went out of stock for a bit. And these are the lovely people at Mighty Brew, obviously full of beneficial probiotics. And you know, I'll be honest with you, I have slipped into a bit of a bad habit these last few months. Well maybe since the beginning of lockdown last year, of just having a glass of wine, you know, like almost every night. And I decided actually, I should probably just scale it back a bit. And so last night I just had a glass of kombucha with a very nice supper and I served it in a wine glass and it absolutely did it for me. And so that's gonna be my new, my new kind of midweek rule now or weekday rule. And so, yeah, if you want to get a really good quality, authentic aged kombucha then mighty brute do still have some of the one that i made with them which is the blush rose which is organic rose and raspberry it's absolutely delicious it comes in a big kind of champagne bottle and there will be news with mighty brew coming soon i'm very excited about something new but i have absolutely um been sworn to secrecy but you will discover it soon in fact we've just done some photographs of this new thing for the new issue, which we are just working on now for the beginning of November. Um, so not only is Mighty Brew its exclusive, the uh, Lizard Wellbeing kombucha, but there is 10% off um, on their website, off everything, not only the one that I've done with them, but on all their lovely things. I'm so looking forward to getting the winter chai. Anybody try their winter chai last year? They're working on it now for, for the winter. And honestly, I'm gonna be hoovering that up because my, my youngest absolutely loves it. And it's a great alternative to sugar laden fizzy drinks because you know that you're giving them something that's actually helping to repopulate the good gut bugs. So how brilliant is that? Not only are you having a low sugar, really healthy, delicious, cordial type drink, but you're drinking something that's good for you. So who's ordered another box? 
<laughs> who is that? Nikki, oh, thank you. You really enjoyed it. I'm glad that you ordered another box because, you know, these things don't hang around. Claire, okay, you obviously missed the beginning. Were you late to class? Oops, I've undone a button. This, is, this dress is from my friend Carol, Carol McEwen. I'll, I'll pop a tag up for her later. But um, yeah, winter chai, so it's great, isn't it? That's kind of got cinnamon and spices. Oh yeah, of course we still like a glass or two of wine. Obviously, yes, obviously. Um, but you know, I'm trying not to make it too regular. Just to say, talking about my magazine, we do still have a few of the subscription gifts left. I talked about this on Monday. This was lovely Life Armour. Amazing deal they've given us at the moment. If you would like some um, of their great drops now they've given us one of these free as a subscription gift which is it drops of vitality in fact i haven't had my vitality this morning so the vitality is the one that contains vitamins b6 and b12 so that is really really helpful and also actually i guess this links into vaginal health um this is the one that also has maca root do you remember the discussion about maca root and menopausal um, women and what it does to libido, apparently. I'm not sure if I should be taking this then. Hmm. I think it's quite safe. Anyway, really good. So these, you can buy them from Life Armour. I think they're £22 for the bottle, but they're giving them free with subscriptions for Liz, our wellbeing magazine. So that is a really good deal. So if you've got your sub and you want to give a gift subscription, maybe to somebody for Christmas or just as a special nice thing, then you can... Talk to Warners directly, that's the best thing, because otherwise they, the two things go together. They give the gift and the subscription to the same person, but if you want to give the magazine subscription and then have the gift sent to you, which might be a good idea, then um, just let Warners know, okay? And they come separately, by the way. They're dispatched separately from two different places, so don't expect them to come in the same package, because they won't. This one will arrive um, a little bit later. But if you don't fancy that, you can still get your discount on all of Life Armour. Let me just check it out. Uh, Life Armour, 15% off everything on their website. Um, and they've also got a special offer, I think, whereas if you spend over 45 pounds, you get a free bottle. I mean, it's really good. Go and have a look at Life Armour. So the ones that I use are obviously the Slumber Drops, which I use at night, and Drops of Balance, which are just very kind of oh, calming. Um, and their immune one, which I've actually got next door because I had that earlier, um, which is also really good. And the other things that I take at the moment, um, I'm taking kind of, I'm doing a month of this, is Super Me. And this is the ashwagandha. Do you remember we talked about adaptogenic herbs and adaptogenic herbs being really fascinating because they work on a hormonal level and regulating things like stress hormones. So the way they work is, I guess the clue is in the name, adaptogenic, they adapt to what you need. So if you have them in the evening, they adapt to calming our stress receptors and giving us a better night's sleep. And then if you take them in the morning, which is when I took my super me this morning, they just give you that little bit of a lift so that you can just kind of deal better with stress and resilience and just feel a bit sharper and fresher. So anyway, that is life armor. So that is it for today. Um, thank you very much. Lots of nice chat. Also, Joe here from YouTube on Delilah. Uh, yeah, so we've still got the Liz Loves discount code with Delilah Cosmetics if you want to take a look at that. Um, this is also a few, just a few comments here uh, on YouTube, um, which I should answer. So this is from Patricia. If you are tuning in, Patricia, on YouTube, uh, you said, I hope you can answer my question. I'm seeing my doctor. I'm taking compounded hormones. Ooh, okay. We can have a conversation about that if you want. For almost a year, but I still don't feel well. And my hormones keep coming, uh, everything, is everything okay, what should I do? I have all the menopause symptoms, except for the hot flashes, uh, which it did help with. Um, I don't know what to do, please can you help me? Well, the first thing I would say is, I personally avoid compounded hormones. If you look up the British Menopause Society, the International Menopause Society, they're very clear about that. Ho bio compounded hormones are unregulated. Okay, they're unregulated, they're not available on the NHS, you often have to pay a serious amount of money for them. You don't know what you're getting, um, you have something like progesterone cream, 
you don't know how it's being absorbed, you don't know whether it's giving you sufficient uterine protection for things like uterine cancer. So I would be very, very wary. There's no need to have compounded hormones when you can go to your doctor and get safe, regulated HRT on the National Health. Or if you want to, you can go to a private clinic selling regulated um, hormones. So, you know, for a fraction of the price. And they're still bioidentical. I think people get confused on this. Bioidentical hormones are regulated. All the gels, the patches, the transdermal gels, the sprays, they're all bioidentical. Estrogen and the eutrogestan, which is the micronized progesterone capsule, that's bioidentical as well. So um, you really don't need to go to a profiteering clinic and be charged hundreds, sometimes thousands of pounds for compounded hormones. Um, you will be able to read more about that uh, in my e-guide the truth about HRT, which I told you. There's also lots online. You can look up the menopause charity, you can look up menopause doctor, you can look up British Menopause Society, International Menopause Society. You know, it's it's all there from credible medics. Um, okay, this is from Faye, also on YouTube. Hi, Faye, I hope you're tuning in to this. Um, I've just joined your channel. I'm halfway through my menopause, and to be honest, it feels like my body is going through a major battle. My body feels like it's giving up. It feels like I've gone to hell and back. Will this feeling ever end? I've been put on patches and hormone tablets. I take my vitamins. Um, is there any advice you can help me to feel better? My doctor's given me antidepressants, but is that really the answer? Well, no, not for menopausal depression. Um, this is a big discussion that's happening at the moment, that a lot of women are being incorrectly prescribed antidepressants for low mood and anxiety triggered by low estrogen. Obviously, antidepressants are brilliant for depression, clinical depression, that's what they're made for. They're not made for replacing oestrogen, which is the cause of low mood and anxiety in menopausal women who um, are having that triggered by loss of oestrogen. So I think it would be worth having a, a, another discussion, Faye, with your GP. You may need to adjust your levels of HRT. There is no one size fits all. I'd love to be able to say, well, you just need this, and well, A, I'm not a doctor, so I would never give medical advice, but you know, it's not a question. Even doctors won't say, you just need this one capsule or you just need this one patch. It's all different, we're all different, and how we respond to things are different. Some women need you know, six, seven pumps of estrogen gel because they don't absorb transdermal gel very well. So you know, it, it, it really is a question of, of trial and error for so many women, and you may need to change your dosage, you may need to change the type of HRT that you're on, so I just hope that you can really get some help. It would be worth having a discussion about testosterone because that can really help with cognitive function and mood. Um, and you know, there are so many things that can impact mood um, and low mood, particularly. I've talked before about vitamin D, we've talked about magnesium, we've talked about dopamine, serotonin. Um, do please take a look on Liz Our Wellbeing website. You may find information there that helps you. So you don't say where you are, Faye, but uh, also take a look at the Life Code GX genetic testing because that can be really interesting. They have got a new test, which I'm going to be doing soon, actually, which I want to report back on, which is all about the genes in the brain that are creating serotonin and GABA and dopamine and the things that are really responsible for driving mood, anxiety, uh, depression, ADD, ADHD, all of those things. And there are genetic components to all of that. So I'm going to do the test and then talk through the results and see see what happens. Um, so I've just been reminded actually by somebody about talking about Delilah, my mention there of Delilah Cosmetics. We do absolutely have, yeah, 20% off with the Liz Loves code. By the way, if ever you want to check on a Liz Loves code, they're all on the website. We've got a great Betty who now runs that um, at Liz Our Wellbeing. She's just brilliant. And if you just go, if you just search Liz Loves, there's a whole section and it's all alphabetical. So, you know, you'll find a Asquith that I was talking about on Monday, they're right at the top, and then you know, going all the way down, Life Armor, Life Code GX, all of those. I'm not sure if we've got anyone beginning with Z. I have to see what we've got at the very end. Um, but yeah, they're, they're all there. And oh, Youth and Earth, I think, is the last one with a Y. <laughs> Youth and Earth, and they make that great NMN and the liposomal glutathione that I've talked about, all of that. Um, but obviously, as they expire, then we remove them. Um, from the website 
uh, otherwise we just yeah um, we just keep them keep them going for as long as we can because I know how valuable they are for everybody um, I am just checking yeah you can take all of those alongside HRT yeah no problem I think the thing is and I'll just finish with this very briefly um, because this is menopause awareness month you know is that HRT is is not a medicine as such it's not a synthetic artificial medicine created to fix an illness or a disease it is what the name says it's replacing hormones it's replacing our own hormones and they are body identical hormones the old-fashioned pellets you know premarin for example that's not body identical still works really well for a lot of women but the newer forms of HRT anything transdermal anything that goes through your skin so that's all the gels all the sprays like Lenzetto all the patches it's all body identical or bio-identical, whichever you like to call it, and it's regulated, okay? So it's safe, it's regulated, um, it has a proper medical license, and it's available on the NHS, it's available on, on prescriptions, or you can have it prescribed privately, whichever you choose. Um, and it is exactly the same as our body is making, exactly the same. So you're just replacing what your body had before. So, the, you know, there's not going to be any contraindication with medication because it's what your body already had, you know. So, I mean, I know lots of doctors I've podcasted with have spoken about this at length. You know, Dr. Rebecca Lewis, um, Dr. Sarah Ball, Zoe Hodson. I'm recording another podcast with another doctor, Dr. Radhika Vora. Um, I'm going to be recording that for next week. You know, th these are all experts. They're all GPs who then qualified into specialist men menopause training. And you can find them online, you can find them on Instagram, you can find them on Facebook, you can, you know, you can follow them. And uh, they just have so much knowledge about the, the safety of replacing our own hormones. And, you know, we just want our hormones back. So many of us in midlife, that's all we want. It's just like, please, can we have our hormones back? I feel like, you know, Oliver going up, you know, saying, please, sir, can I have some more? It's like, I've lost them because I'm older and I'd like some more. It's like you wouldn't refuse a, a diabetic insulin because they don't have, they're not making their insulin or somebody with a, a you know, thyroid issue. You wouldn't say, well, you can't have any more, you know, thyroxine. It's like, this, you know, these are all hormones that we have naturally. Same with testosterone. That's kind of the next big battle, isn't it? Testosterone. And don't forget, women make four times as much testosterone in our ovaries than we do estrogen. So testosterone is very much a female hormone, not just to do with libido, uh, but also to do with cognitive function, memory, brain fog, muscle mass, strength, stamina, all of that. Anyway, I'm going to stop because otherwise I'm going to get on my soapbox. And that's never a good thing, is it? <laughs> yeah, osteoporosis. Oh my goodness. Absolutely, osteoporosis. Um, you know, it's it's in the nice guidelines for menopause uh, as as a as a foremost treatment. Um, please, yeah, do 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 look on that. Yeah, I know. I don't know, Duxter. I don't know why there's a lot of anti HRT online at the moment. Pff, I mean, who knows? Who knows? There's there's no reason why that should be. But I think there's a lot of very good sound medics. I mean, I think a lot of people work off old information. Um, and they perhaps aren't quite so up to date with the with the studies, um, but anyway, you know who to follow. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Who's this? Joe. Just used my testosterone five minutes ago. Makes such a huge difference. Good for you. Thank you very much. Lovely. Um, can you be tested to see if you need HRT? Devon Creator, you need to read my e-guide. Okay, that's your homework. Please go away and download the truth about HRT. It'll tell you all about it. Okay. <laughs> you love it when I'm on my soapbox. Yeah, but it's exhausting. Honestly, I was in touch with um, Davina the other day and, uh, you know, she's got things planned and, you know, wants us all to march on Parliament and things. And I'm just, I'm exhausted just thinking about it. But yeah, anyway, perhaps we should just go and do it. Anyway, sending you lots of love. I'm going to stop now. It's Wednesday if you're watching this in real time. So tomorrow there's a new film up on YouTube. Please make sure that you're subscribed to the Lizard Wellbeing magazine YouTube channel. And you can switch on notifications there if you want to just hear whenever we get a new film uploaded. 
Friday, make sure that you have got the newsletter coming into your inbox. It's completely free. We don't share your data or spam you or do anything like that, but there's just lots of good things coming out for the weekend. I've got my Friday Five podcast with Dr. Louise Newson. That will be coming out on Friday. There's also a podcast episode going live today on the Lizard Wellbeing Show. So do please listen out to that if you are a podcast listener. And I shall be back with you live on Monday for a Monday makeover. Uh, I'm back here again, of course, live next Wednesday for Wellbeing Wednesday. Thank you very much for being with me. Uh, <laughs> thank you for all your comments. It's lovely to read them. It's really nice to be part of this great community. Have a lovely rest of the week. Take care. Bye-bye.